evening cherries fans and also football fans across the entire premier league this is a special special show as you've probably seen before i welcome on my special guest here's a little bit about our sponsors dental on the banks If you visit dentalonthebanks.co.uk. Now, this special show is a season preview show with a little bit of a difference. We're going to have fan views, so your videos talking about your club and where you think you will finish. We're also going to find out what Harry thinks about each of the clubs and their activity so far in the transfer market and also where he thinks you'll finish. But let's bring him on. It is a pleasure to welcome onto the show, Harry Redknapp again. Hello, Harry. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. All good. Thank you. Very good. Excellent stuff. And great to have you back on the show again. So, um, of course, new season is just upon us. Um, and what we're going to do today is run through each of the teams, just get some of Harry's thoughts, um, and then there'll be a fan video at the end, and then we'll do, um, we'll have a little bit of a prediction of where teams are going to finish. But shall we start then from the very top, Harry? Um, so last season's champions, Manchester City, um, of course, managed by Pep Guardiola, um, very successful in the Premier League, but. Um, not so much in the Champions League. No, I mean, they've got a fantastic team, haven't they? They're, they're just, you know, I'm sure they still would, they've, they've still got that great desire to win the Champions League. But, you know, they're going to be favourites. They are favourites again with the bookmakers to be the Premier League winners again this year. Mm -hmm. Only just, you know, last year was a great, great battle between two fantastic teams, you know, Man City and Liverpool. And I, it, I'm sure it will be the same again this year. You know, I'm sure Liverpool will be up there, and it's going to be it's going to be a real titanic battle. I would think between the two of them, as to who wins it. And of course, Man City have made some big signings. They signed Haaland already, and yeah. also Phillips as well. Very, very good signing. Um, Phillips is a really rate him. Yeah, a couple of great signings. Strengthened a fantastic squad that they already have. So. Uh, as I say again, they are worthy favourites. There's no doubt about that. But Liverpool are also an incredible team. We, we've got the, for me. I still think, even though Real Madrid won Champions League, I still think the best two teams in Europe are Liverpool, Man City, Man City, and Liverpool, and whatever. You know, I still think they're the best two teams. And um, to have them both in the one division, it makes it very difficult for you know one. They can't both win it. So uh, I do think the winner will come from one of them two again this year. What do you think Klopp needs to do to actually turn the tide? Well, I mean, one point, what do you do? It's, it's you know, it's such a small margin. There's nothing you can say he's got to do, really. I mean, they've lost Mane, they've brought one or two players in. What can you do? One game, one point. It was, it was touch and go right until the very end. He's just got to do the same again this year, basically, and... You know, and uh, see if they can just turn that one one point deficit into a 
into under, you know a winning uh, margin this year. But it it'll be t it'll be difficult, you know. But it's it, there's nothing between the two teams. They're both incredible teams. So uh, I think Liverpool. I wouldn't like to pick a winner. I think it's going to be that tight again this year. Well, let's see what our fans think. Hi, Harry. Rachel Hudson here. Big Man City fan since 1989. Obviously, we're a little bit better these days. Happy new season. Um, last season was absolutely brilliant. Once again, as a Man City fan, uh, managed to defend the league, although Liverpool pushed us all the way. Um, two great games against them as well. Two brilliant adverts for the Premier League. I think, obviously, although we shared the points, I think uh, we probably came out on top on both in both games. Two great games against United as well, wiped the floor with them last season. That's always good as a Man City fan. Um, our away form was sensational last year. We didn't get off to a good start at Spurs, but I think that was the only game we lost away from home all season. And then, in typical Man City style, we managed to create our own drama um, in the last two games. So West Ham away, Mara's missing that penalty, so then it went to the last game and um yeah, I've got to admit when Coutinho scored I thought the writing was on the wall for the, the trophy to be making its way down the M sixty two. But fortunately the Gundawan inspired comeback meant that that didn't happen and in I didn't think I'd ever celebrate a goal as much as I celebrated Aguero's goal in there. Uh, in 2012, but I think this Gundawan's third goal, sorry, Gundawan's second goal, City's third, ran it pretty close. So, so yeah, a great season for us. Um, some outstanding performances from Bernardo, who I think was rumoured this time last year to be leaving City. Thank God he didn't. Um, De Bruyne as well. Uh, Foden stepped up and had more game time as well. And then this season, we've got even more firepower to add as well. So last season, I think we played most of the season without a recognised striker. Obviously, Gabriel Jesus looks like he's on his way out now as well. Um, but with Haaland and Alvarez both coming in, what a frightening prospect. I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing as City fans that we can go and watch players like this week in, week out. But brilliant for the Premier League as well, that the likes of uh, Haaland are choosing to come and, and plough his trade in the Premier League. I think we're all pretty privileged to be to be watching him and really looking forward to see what he's got to offer. The fact there's been so much uh, hoo-ha around his signing means that Alvarez has gone pretty much under the radar and he's a South American player of the year, so really excited to see what he's got to offer. Looks like we're about to um, sign Calvin Phillips as well, which I think is a brilliant bit of business by City. You know, 47 million, when I hear about Declan Rice's price tag of, of over 100 million, it's a no-brainer. So, yeah. Really looking forward to seeing. He's obviously a replacement for Fernandinho. And it looks like we're going to sign the left back from Brighton as well. So great business by City. Um, dangerous for the rest of the Premier League though as well. We're favourites for, for a reason. Bucky's favourites to win the league for a reason. I think we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll do it again this season. Just want to go one further in the Champions League. That was a little bit disappointing. You know, 90 seconds of madness spoiled that campaign last season. And still... I'm still not got over from the the um, season before against Chelsea, if I'm perfectly honest. So, so yeah, see what the season brings. Um, have a good one. Hello, folks. Douglas from the Dugout Football Channel giving you an insight into Liverpool's season uh, and season hopes ahead. Um, I have to say last season, the 21-22 season, was a season where you could say that we did very, very well. Um, we won the FA Cup. We won the League Cup. We put Manchester City very, very close again, and we lost in the Champions League final. So you know, to be in to be in three finals, which was very, very impressive, um, indeed. Um, the one thing I can say is I think the the players were very, very good last season, especially the players sort of stepping up. Sometimes we obviously had Andy Robertson out. You know, sometimes we obviously had Trent Alexander Ar Arnold out. But like those that like Costa Simicas comes in, he does he does very very well. Diogo Jota does very very well as well. So I do think that the 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 season last season was very very good, and you know obviously beating one of your biggest rivals five nil at, my, at Old Trafford was was amazing um, as well. And to obviously beat them four nil at uh, at Anfield as well. My hopes for this season, I hope we can. Obviously, win the Premier League. I think, you know, I want one of the big ones this season. I obviously want to win the Premier League or I want to win the Champions League. That is what every Liverpool fan wants um, as well. But for me, 
always the league. Always the league. It always is the league for me. Um, but the only thing I can say is that we are lacking a midfielder. We've made some very good signings. Darwin, Nunez, he does need time to settle in. I think that is definitely the case. I don't see him starting the season. I think it will be um, Diaz, Firmino, Salah. I think that will be the, the front three that probably starts the season uh, at Fulham. And it probably starts the season against Manchester City um, on Saturday. I really, really do think that. Uh, Fabio Carvalho, I think we have to watch out for this player. I think he is a very, very good player. Looks a, looks very good in pre-season um, as well. So I think he'll do, he will do good. And Calvin Ramsey as well is a very good uh, backup right back uh, for Trent Alexander-Arnold. I think this is the thing we've been needing for a long, long time is a backup for Alexander-Arnold. And I do think that Calvin Ramsey is the answer uh, as well. Uh, also, losing Mane, that, that was a big, big loss. That was a very, very big, big loss. Losing, her, losing a player like him... To, to Bayern Munich and look I, I think it was his time to go I think every Liverpool fan kind of had an incentive that one of the one of the front three of Firmino, Mane and Salah were going to leave um, last summer uh, th this summer I should say um, but I didn't think I don't th didn't think it would be Mane I did not think it would be Mane um, I'm going to have to say that my hopes for this season I just hope we can do it I really really do but we are lacking a midfielder and we badly, badly need a midfielder. You know, our midfield is very, very aging. Jordan Henderson is getting on. Thiago Alcantara is getting on. Even Fabinho, he, you know, he'll be turning 30 very, very soon as well. You obviously got James Milner. You've got Naby Keita. But can he stay fit? Can he be reliable? That is that is the main thing for me. Um, my prediction for the season, I'm sorry to say, I, I without a midfield signing... I think we'll finish second. I think we'll finish second, unfortunately. But this is the thing. Man City are not uh, focusing on the Champions League. Well, let's just say that now. They will not be focusing on the Champions League. Pep will want to win the Premier League again. And I think they will. I think they will. I think what's going to happen is we'll be very, very close again. But that lack of midfield signing is what I think will be the key uh, between winning the title or losing the title. But thank you very much, Craig, for asking me to do this. And uh, I hope you have a very good show. Thank you. So uh, just behind them um, last season was Chelsea. So Chelsea yeah. finished third. Uh, Thomas Tuchel, um, a very good manager. However, um, it was a bit of a turbulent season for Chelsea, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, obviously, with all the problems going on with the chairman, the owner, you know, Roman Abramovich. So, hopefully, the, the things have settled down now. And they're going to be strong again. They've lost a couple of key players, but they've brought a couple of top players in as well. So, Raheem Sterling, I think it's a great signing. He'll score goals, make goals. You know, he's a top player. I think they've made a couple of good signings. So, they're going to be right there again. I think Tottenham are going to be a big danger to everybody this year. I think they're going to be a very improved team. I think Tottenham have, got, have made some great signings, uh, strengthened an already good squad. They've got Harry Kane and Son. They're two best incredible front men. Um, so I think Tottenham are going to be bang there as well. I, I, and Chelsea, I'm sure, will be. So it's going to be a real exciting you know, battle. I, be, I do think Tottenham will get closer this year to Man City and Liverpool for sure. And... Uh, It'd be interesting, as I say, they had one or two injuries, Chelsea, late on. They lost a the left back with, you know, uh, with a bad injury, Chilwell. And I think, but I think they will, they will come back strong. One of the younger lads, James, another year older, more experienced, fantastic talent. Mason Mount, absolutely top class. I do think they'll be. Uh, they're still probably short of a, a, an out and out front man. That is a big problem. Lukaku didn't do it. They've sold him. They could still deal with a front man. If they don't get a good front man who can score goals, then that's going to cost them dearly. But where do you find a top class front man unless you're going to you're going to spend you know I don't know seventy eighty million pounds? It's very difficult. Yeah, completely agree. And where are um, they anyway? That is the problem. Yes, yeah, very, very true. Um, what we'll do is we'll skip, um, we'll come back to Tottenham towards the end because, of course, one of your former clubs. Um, but also looking at Arsenal as well. Um, Arsenal finished just outside the Champions League places, but they've already made some decent signings. Mikel Arteta, another year in that job. And 
I don't think he's doing a bad job of it, really. He's doing okay. He's doing okay. They were where that squad, you know, look at the squad, it's about where I, where I see them, you know, six, fifth, sixth, seventh, yeah, I, certainly that's about where I, I see them. I think they're, they're okay. They're not, they're not really out there challenging. I mean, you look back at Arsenal a few years, you know, back in the, the good, ass, great Arsenal teams that they've had, and this team, it really is nowhere near in the quality, not in the same class as the great teams of the past. Uh, none of this team would have even got in the, the team of Henri and Burkamp and Vieira and all them people. So they've still got a long way to go. I do. I see him finishing. I see him finishing probably about mm, six again. And I know you mentioned there about Arsenal, but the other club um, just behind them last season, Man United. Um, likewise with Arsene Wenger. Um, nobody's really filled Sir Alex Ferguson's boots, but could that all change? Um, not unless he gets good players in. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it all, it's all about recruitment. It's all yeah. about re- people who don't understand, who don't understand the management. They, this fella's a great manager. This fella's no good. This, the most important thing you need to be a successful manager is good players. And the teams yeah. at the top have got the best players. The teams at the bottom this year, you know, they came up. Now they're going to have to struggle. They've got the same managers who will be saying the same things. He'll be doing the same thing on the training ground. But the players they've come up with, they were top players in the championship, but not good enough for the Premier from bottom. And that's what you've got. So what can you do? You know, Arteta can do what he wants. The new guy, you know, he can come in at Man United. It depends on who he brings in. They need four or five players. If he gets four or five top players, they could be up there finishing the top four. But if he doesn't, they'll be where they were last year, struggling to get in the top six. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, um, well, let's just see what the Chelsea, Arsenal, Man United fans do think. Hi, and this is my Chelsea review of last season and my hopes and predictions for this season. We started on a high after winning our second Champions League trophy and winning the Super Cup. Despite a turbulent opening training session in August, hashtag Team Timo, we'd started with a bang, beating Crystal Palace at home 3-0. It was an emotional day being back at Stamford Bridge after the pandemic had disrupted football for us football fans. Our first away game of the season was at Arsenal. We beat them 2-0 and Rhys James celebrating John Terry-esque in front of the Arsenal fans. Then on to our second away game of the season at Anfield, where frustratingly, Rhys James was sent off after a dubious handball decision, which resulted in Liverpool taking a point from us. It was onwards and upwards from there. Despite a blip at Man City, we watched our first win of four against Tottenham last season. Sorry, Harry. We were top of the league at Newcastle. An excellent performance from Rhys James, Chess Control FC. A super Chelsea performance at Leicester away, where Ben Chilwell really should have scored the opener early doors. And watching our best football at home this season, beating Juventus 4-0 in the Champions League. But it was this game that also saw our first blow, with Ben Chilwell injuring his ACL, a really defining moment of the season. Following Rhys James injuring his hamstring, and didn't allow us to play the football that we wanted to. And that was the first of our disruptions to the season, on the pitch at least. All I can say is thank you and well done to Thomas Tuchel for not letting the Lukaku situation really disrupt our season. As we went on to complete the trophy set, winning the Club World Cup in Abu Dhabi, from champions of the world in the UAE, to returning back to Luton away, en route to the game, finding out that Roman Abramovich was to sell Chelsea Football Club. It was a day of mixed emotions and it felt like Groundhog Day pretty much to the end of the season other than one standout performance. Chelsea at the Bernabeu, the first time as a Chelsea fan that we have witnessed Chelsea play Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. Scoring four goals, yes four, another handball decision against us. Going into the game with carefree expectations but despite beating Real Madrid in the second leg it wasn't to be. As we adjust to our new ownership, my hopes for the season are to build a team that Tuchel wants, 
as he fully deserves it. And it's difficult to predict, but I think that Chelsea will finish third with the hope to be within single digits of the top two and to continue to challenge for trophies and for the Chelsea women's team to go get that Champions League. Hello to Mr. Harry Redknapp. Hope you're doing well, mate. Rich Pennycott here, Arsenal fan. Thank you very much for having me on. So, um, yeah, so over a review of Arsenal last season. Um, ultimately, I would say very disappointing on how it ended, obviously missing out on the Champions League. Um, I think, obviously, the the biggest bitterest pill to swallow was the fact that obviously we lost out to our North London rivals, Tottenham, which is never pleasant. Um but yes, I mean, in terms of the season, progress has been made. We've achieved a fifth place finish. So we're back in Europe in the Europa League. So compared to the season before that, um, yeah, we had an eighth place finish. So I would say uh, if anyone had said to me at the beginning of last season, would you have taken a fifth place finish? Then I would say, hell yeah, because it's, it's progress for us. Um, we're back in Europe after a season of being out in Europe. But again, based on level of performances, it could have been so much more. We could have got into the Champions League. But um you know, ultimately, the game that lost, you know, that was the turning point for our season was the game against Tottenham, um, away to them in the North London derby. You know, we, we had a centre-back sent off, we lost 3-0. We then had a very disappointing follow-up performance against um, Newcastle, um, when effectively it was their final home game of their season. They had nothing really to play for. They were comfortable mid-table and they made a statement in front of their home fans. They ended up running out comfortably, 2-0 winners, and we just had no response. So... Yeah, ultimately very, very disappointing. Went down to the final game of the season where, you know, we come to beat Everton 5-1, who again had nothing to play for. They already safe from relegation. And we were hoping and praying that Spurs would go away to Norwich, already relegated Norwich, and hopefully Norwich can pull off a shock result and beat them. But unfortunately that wasn't to be. Um, so yeah, missing out on the Champions League was a, was a big blow for our season. But there were positives. Um, I think it's it's a very young squad, um, probably the youngest in the Premier League, I believe. Um, but we do have some very, very exciting players. I mean, standout players for me, Bukayo Saka, um, brilliant player, very, very exciting. We'll always take players on and create chances. The same for Martinelli as well. Um, very, very good. Been in period form, love watching him. Um, always very, very exciting to watch. Um, you know, in defence as well, you know, we brought in the deadline day signing of Tommy Asu as well, you know, a relatively unknown player from Japan who's helped steady our back line. Gabriel, centre back, has put in some very impressive performances. Um, you know, Ben White as well had a hefty price tag from Brighton as well that I was a bit dubious about. Um, but again, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's done really, really well. Um, Kenny as well is also very, very good. Um, you know, puts in some fantastic crosses and has an incredible work ethic. Um, and I think for next season as well, you know, some of the players that we've been linked with, you know, Yuri Tillemans of Bro um, Leicester, say Brighton Leicester, um, you know, looks looks a very good player. Um, Rafinha from Leeds. Um, who else? Gabriel Jesus from Man City as well. Again, he would be a welcome addition up front. We've already been brought in the likes of Marquinhos as well. Again, exciting player. Um, Fabio Vieira, so we've got another Vieira Arsenal as well. Let's hope he's, um, you know, he's, 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 he makes the same impact as the old Vieira as well. That would be very, very good. Um, but the signs are good for next season um, if we can get the right players in. Um, my prediction would be a fourth place finish as well because we've shown that we could do it for the majority of the season. We have a very, very young squad, but we just need to show that the, the matureness that we can take it the next step further, be a less erratic in some games and maintain that consistent level of results. I think that's very, very important. Um, so I am going for a top four finish. Um, come on, you gooners. I hope we can do it. And thank you again. Thank you very much for having Hi, me. Hi, Harry. I uh, hope you're keeping well. Uh, I've been asked by Craig here as a Man United fan to kind of give a summary as to uh, how I thought last season went uh, <laughs> watching them. Uh, I think to sum it up quite easily is uh, thank heavens it's over. Um, finishing the season before runners up and then um, the beginning of the season beating Leeds 5-1 you kind of thought you know we were on the right track with Solskjaer and then it just drastically took a U-turn and we done a nosedive um, and by the end of the season players just playing with no confidence uh, looked like they didn't want to be there you know the hard work just seemed to evaporate there was just nothing um, as United fan, you can't even complain about that the club didn't spend any money and make any signings. They, they spent a, a fortune, absolute fortune. So you can't make, uh, was it just, you know, uh, 
bad choice of players? Uh, is it poor management? Has the disruption of obviously it's never good to have a manager uh, sacked halfway through a season and bringing an interim manager. It's, it's nothing permanent. Um, and I think the epitome of the season was really where it was that summed it up was was Brighton and um, last game of the season, Crystal Palace. By the end of it, the players even looked themselves. Uh, I, I can't wait for this season to be over. Uh, and I think we were even lucky to finish where we did in the league. I, I've, the way we was watching it and how disastrous it was, I would have thought we'd finish lower. Um, but we, we held on to there. And uh, next season, obviously, the introduction of a new manager, he's done well with Ajax. Um, obviously, Premiership, different cattle with fish. Uh, but he's, he's so far, he's, he's bleeding the team out, the players he doesn't want there. Um, he's recalling players out on loan that he thinks are going to um, a fit for his ethos of the way he wants to play football. Um, hopefully some good signings coming through as well. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I think it would be a miracle to be... I think it would be over-ambitious to say that Man United will be uh, fighting for the league next year. Um, I think they proved this season just gone how leaps and bounds they are behind... The, the other the other at least top three teams there are so Liverpool City and Chelsea just miles ahead um, but I, I think going well um, hopefully breathe some f uh, some um, kind of fresh air into United you know they play some exciting football I'll just take that and I, I think you know they, their ambition would, would be to uh, go for top four um, do I think they'd do it? No, I think it would take more than one season to to bring them up to the four teams above them. Um, so I, I think, realistically, I think United will be looking at fifth for this year. Thanks a lot, mate. And then, of course, we'll skip West Ham until the end, of course. You spent a lot of time there. Um, so we'll focus a little bit more on them at the end. But uh, Leicester and Brighton were just outside the... Brighton a good season, um, but Leicester, what do you feel, um, you know, is that where they should be or do you think they should be kicking well, yeah, on? Yeah, I mean, they overachieved, didn't they? I mean, to win a title a few years ago mm -hmm. was an incredible achievement and Brendan's done a good job there last few years. But again, it's a squad that they had one or two key injuries last year, especially at the back, they lost their centre-halves. They also had Vardy out for a long spell, which was a massive loss because he's still a great goal scorer. So that was the problem for them. They get them fit. They're again, they're a team I could see finishing seventh, eighth. You know, I would put them just outside the uh, top six, um, and that's about where they'll be again this year. Brighton had a good season. Um, uh, you know, I think that. They lost a good player when they lost. They lost the centre half. Burns went to uh, Newcastle. Um, the left. I still would imagine the full back or left back will move on. I would think if Man City want him, they'll get him. He's going to want to go to Man City. I don't think anything's going to stop him. Brighton are obviously playing the game and wanting to get more money for him. Uh, they know they've got Man City on the hook who really want him. So, uh, but I'm sure that deal will happen. So that's going to be a big loss to Brighton. But uh, yeah, I like Brighton. I like the way they played. Again, I see him finishing the top half, but you know, maybe around about tenth, ninth, tenth, somewhere around that that sort of spot. And the team that completed the top half last season was Wolves, and um, yeah. I expected them to kick on. To be fair, um, but you know. It, of course, Bruno Lange, um, you know, they did very well under Nuno, didn't they? But um... They did. Well, the, the thing he had in his favour, he had George Mendes. Mm. George Mendes is the biggest age, football agent in the world and he, he controls a massive percentage of the best players in the world. And what he did at Wolves, he got involved with the owners and he brought the players in. So he had the, you know, that... It ain't that them Portuguese lads weren't growing up thinking I want to play for Wolves one day. <laughs> George Mendes was their agent and he brought them in and, and parked them at Wolves and um, and put them in the shop window and, and that's what happened really. A lot of those, and he had an, a big in to the top players and suddenly they, they managed to get some fantastic players in. And uh, But I think that 
yeah, I think we've seen the best of Wolves for a few years. I think they did great. They, they play some fantastic football and they've got some outstanding players. Now, it's whether they can keep them all. If they can, I'm sure they'll do well again next year. Uh, a top half finish is really possible for them. But it depends now what happens with with the players. You know, do they stay or do they one or two clubs being interested in them? But no, I like I like Wolves. I like the, the football they played. Uh, I thought they were really attractive to watch. Um, but again, um, they they need to add one or two to that squad. I think if they're going to push on and try to you know push for a top six, top seven place. But they've done great, haven't they? They've come up from the championship a few years back. And, uh, you know, the, it, it's a massive club, Wolves. People, you know, not pe people. the older people would remember the great Wolves teams of the past. So it's a club steeped in history and it's good to see them in the Premier League and being a top half team again. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, hopefully they'll, you know, I think they'll probably solidify themselves in the mid table. Um, you know, we'll hear from the Leicester, Brighton and Wolves fans now and um, see what they've got to say. Hello, good evening to Craig and Harry. How the devil are you, sir? Um, my poor neighbour lived down the road from me. Still waiting for my invite for uh, for a coffee, Harry, but uh, I know you're busy. I know you're busy, but, you know, call me. Call me, OK? So, <laughs> Leicester City, what can I say last season? Yeah, moving on. And it was not, oh, we, we say it wasn't our best season. I mean, I think at the start, if you'd said like, okay, you'll finish eighth, just outside a European place. Uh, you'll get to a semi-final of a European cup. Um, we wouldn't have probably moaned. We'd have probably bitten your hand off for that. Problem is we had for the last two seasons, in a way, overachieved. I mean, you know, we, we both times we spent 37 weeks in the top four, losing out in the last week both both times, but ending up in the Europa League for two seasons. Um, and you look at us and thinking, well, you know, was that was that achieving? Well, yes, it was. We did well. We got a damn good squad. Uh, which is probably about eighth or ninth sort of expensive in, in the Premier League. So we've probably finished where you would expect us to be. Um, but the last two seasons, Arsenal have struggled, Tottenham have struggled. Uh, we haven't really had any competition for that um, sort of fourth, fifth, sixth position. Um, West Ham kind of last season. Uh, but all these, you know, the, the other clubs, the Tottenham and the Arsenal, have sort of had a lot of mini implosions over the last few seasons. So it left the door open and we walked through. Um, so, yeah, two very good seasons, winning the FA Cup. Tears to a grown man's eyes. To be there and watch that with my, my, my son was, was amazing. And to win the charity, well, the Community Shield, so as it is called, I like to call it the English Super Cup because of those FA Cup winners versus Premier League winners. <laughs> to be at Wembley with my son and his fiance and watch us win and lift the trophy. I mean, I it, it's something that years ago us Leicester fans had only dreamed of. But last season, we had nearly 30 injuries during the season. You know, we never had the same back four. I think even Harry would have struggled with Leicester's injury problems last season. Yeah, I've, I've seen how you did with the England boys. <laughs> like they were a bit older, I'll grant you that. They were a bit older. But no, we had we had let's say, over 30 deliveries. We've had nine injuries, just the defensive players. You know, I mean, I think I think Brendan had to sort of base his uh, base his formation on basically what fit players. You know, if you're a defender and you fit, stick your hand up. Oh, there's only three. You out. We'll have to play three at the back then. I think that was what. But as bad as it was, and it kind of you know we realised it was getting bad. Um, it's, the Forest game in the FA Cup was bad. So yeah, it was. But it, there was there was reasons behind it. There was reasons behind it. And uh, like I say, eighth at the end of the season was not bad for the season. You know, injury problems that we had, uh, as a, anybody, any manager would have struggled with that. And a semi-final of a European Cup to be put out 
by a team managed by Jose Mourinho, who obviously knows what he's doing when it comes to European finals, and went on to win it. So he went out to the winner. So it wasn't that bad. Hopes for next season? Well, and I'm going to do my best impression of an Arsenal fan here. We haven't got Europe next season, so we'll be able to concentrate on the league and get into the Champions League. Yeah, how did that work out, Arsenal fans? Now, I don't think we'll get into the Champions League. Um, there's going to be a lot of teams now, like us, that are going to be around that position looking for Europe and teams that are improving their their squad. You know, the last few seasons, like I say, we've had... We've had it to ourselves, really, when you've got your Arsenal and your Spurs not doing well, and then you've got your um, Leicester, so we were doing well. Last season, West Ham, they're spending money, so they look like they're going to be uh, in trouble. Uh, in trouble, They're going to challenge again. Tottenham, I say, are back. Uh, Arsenal are kind of back, and they are spending big. They're making some good signings. Newcastle, they, I mean, you know, they, they, they can blow everybody out of the water. I mean, they're being sensible. They're not going to go for the win in the Premier League this season, but they'll they'll get Europe. I'm pretty sure of it. Um, and then you've got to think of you know Aston Villa. So there's a lot of teams. So if we could get top seven and get even if it's the Europa Conference, if we can finish top seven, I would be very very happy. It's a rebuilding season. Brendan's been going on about this rebuild. So fingers crossed. Uh, our hopes for next season, therefore, will be a European place. A cup run, I'll take that. I think I'm not necessarily win another cup, but I think we could have a, a cup run. Like I said, we've not got Europe to worry about. Um, where do I think we'll finish prediction wise? Sixth or seventh, and, and a European spot in some form. I think, I think, like I say, you've got you've got the top five, you then got Newcastle will be in there, then you've got to say ourselves, West Ham, and Villa. West Ham have got Europe, they really do need to do the squad up. So I think we could finish sixth or seventh. I hope that is all good for you. I'm going to go off now and check my phone and see if Harry's texted me that invitation for coffee. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Take care. to every And everybody, wherever you finish, whichever team you support, have a good season next season. And come on, England, for the World Cup. I'm Chloe, British tea hater, and I'm a Brighton fan. Last season for us was incredible. One of the best seasons I've had following the Albion. Um, we finished ninth, which is our highest ever top flight finish. And I'm just so proud of how far we've come as a football club. And there was just some absolutely incredible, memorable wins and results in that time. You know, going to Anfield and Stamford Bridge and getting a point, um, beating Spurs and Arsenal, and then absolutely thumping United 4-0. That was just so, such a fun day. It was just so much fun. And I just remember being absolutely ecstatic. Um, yeah, it was an, it was a great season last season. Um, we did have a bit of a bad spell in the middle where we lost six games in a row. I think that was in about March time. Um, but we started strongly and we finished strongly. It was just a bit of a rough patch in the middle. So maybe if we don't have that rough patch next season, we could push up the table a little bit. Not that I'm being too ambitious. Um, for next season, I think I'd like to see us sort of consolidate that comfortable mid-table finish. Um, I don't think we're going to be in a relegation fight. And obviously, no, I, I wouldn't want that at all. So I think anywhere from 8th to 14th is where I'm predicting us to finish. Um, obviously, the higher the better. Um, but anywhere within those sort of spaces, I think I would be relatively happy with sort of 8th. 12th maybe um i can't see us really pushing in for europe um obviously we've lost basuma to spurs um and i'm not sure we've actually got a like for like replacement in the squad um we've got alzate um who's probably the most similar player and he did play a few games last season when basuma was at um, AFCON and he did look quite good so maybe he can step up um, we've also got Caicedo but he, he doesn't sort of break up play in the same way that Basuma did um, they're different players really um, and Caicedo's brilliant and he's been a revelation in our midfield but um, 
I don't think he's a bassoon replacement as such. Um, so I would like to see us bring someone in, but I don't know if we are going to. Um, we've been linked with players, but I don't think there's been much in it, to be honest. Um, obviously, holding on to Cucurello is another thing that I would really like to see us do, and it seems like City are majorly undervaluing him at the moment, so fingers crossed. Um, Attacking-wise, we brought in Enciso, um, youngster. It looked like he was going to go out on loan, but I think he might actually be staying with us now, which is good. He's looked really bright in the friendlies, um, as have Matoma and Undav, who were out on loan to USG last season. Obviously, we recalled them, um, and they've looked really good in the friendlies, um, and they scored in the friendly in Portugal. Um, I can't remember who it was against, but... Yeah, so they're looking good. Matoma particularly is looking like a really bright spark and um, it gives us a bit, few more forward options and um, looking forward to this season and I think we'll finish. I'm going to say about 11th. Um, I just did say 8th to 14th earlier, but if I had to pick one place, 11th. Um, so up the Albion. Can't wait for next season. Hi guys, my name is Dave from the Wolves fan channel, Talking Wolves. Hope you guys are keeping well. Um, yeah, a quick review of Wolves season, uh, the 21-22 season. It, on paper, it looks like it was an alright season for Wolves. But the way we finished it, the way uh, we probably could have been a lot higher up the table, is what has frustrated and disappointed a lot of Wolves fans uh, this summer, really. You look at, obviously, Bruno Large, his first... Uh, season in charge as a manager, um, not getting a huge amount of of backing, if I'm honest, um, and he done really really well up until about end of January. We were within the European spots. We were knocking on the door for a top six uh, place, and we we're even being spoken about maybe being uh, a team that could sneak into the top four at the time. Um, and we were in such a strong position in January, the board sort of distanced them sells from it they didn't really want to spend any more any money to improve the squad and push for that uh, top six spot and to be honest ever since sort of mid to end of feb it just went downhill we had a disastrous end, end to the season uh i don't think we won in six or seven games uh so we've gone into this summer and going into the 22 23 season with frustratingly a little bit of negativity um we, i'm speaking right now right at the end of june we haven't signed any players. There are a lot of speculation in regards to players such as Ruben Neves and João Martinho who are yet to sign new deals at the club. So it's a really difficult time to for Wolves at the moment. I think we all know that Wolves are a solid team. Um, they have got the finances if the board want to put their hand in their pocket. Um, so I think Wolves are always a team that Opposition fans don't really like playing against for one reason or another as well. So going into next season, I just hope we can build on, you know, in the end we finish top half. I hope we can build on that and possibly push for a top six, top seven again. But as it stands without us spending much money, I don't think we uh, we can do that. So really interesting times for Wolves and the ownership. Have they given up on Wolves already? Are they trying to be quite clever with their money? I don't know. But uh, last season on paper, Bruno Large debut season. Top half finish, which isn't so bad, uh, but the ending to the season and the negativity going into this summer does make me wonder how next season is going to go. Well, moving on, and actually, let's focus a little bit more on this team. Um, Newcastle, um, and of course, Eddie Howe. Um, what a marvellous job he did. Yeah, Eddie did a great job. You know, again, had the resources to bring a couple of players in and they were fantastic. They were good signings. Trippier was a good signing. Burns, the centre-half, I felt was an outstanding sign. I think he's a, a really good player. He came in and made a big difference at the back. They got Wilson back fit, which was a big plus because he's outstanding. Centre-forward can score goals, works hard for the team. And they suddenly, and the future looks great. I mean, they've got money. They're going to have money to spend. If the recruitment's good, which I think it will be, then the future for Newcastle is looking fantastic. You know, it may not, it won't be this year. They're not going to be winning winning titles or finishing in the top four with that squad. But there was certainly, you know, a team that will establish themselves again. 
I mean, we're, we're picking everybody in the top half at the moment. One or two of them are not going to make it, but they're a team, really, that squad that should finish in the top half this year. Yeah, and I I had a little bit of a prediction. Um, and I think they might even finish as high as third. I don't think Where? they'll be able to finish third. Not a chance. Not a chance. There we not are. Not a prayer. <laughs> not a prayer. I just think that Eddie got the best out of that team. And if you look he might at... Have done, but you can have any money you want. They have not got a prayer of finishing in the first three. No, fair enough. Um, no prayer. Eddie's not, got, he's not, he's not a magician. He mm. needs good players, like I keep saying to you with managers. They need good players. They've got a decent squad of players, but they're not in the same level as a Chelsea or Tottenham. Uh, not in the same level. They wouldn't got no chance of finishing the top four. Mm-hmm. He, he he did a fantastic job to get them from yeah. the position yeah, they were job. in. But, you and know... Um, and Eddie Ed, did very well. They had some good signings come in and made a big difference. But, yeah, I think... Yeah, maybe I've over-egged it a little bit, Harry, but... <laughs> oh, absolutely. You've over-egged it. You've, you've burnt the eggs about over-egged it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see what the Newcastle fan Grace. Hi, I'm Grace, and I'm talking a little touch on the Newcastle's season that they had last season. So, just starting off, um, the se- the season, you know, their season never got off to a good start. You know, we got a we got a Christmas, and we'd had five points on the on the board, which no team who would who hadn't won had um on that low point had stayed up and managed to get through. But the takeover happened. We signed Eddie Howe as our new manager, and January came. And January, January's transfer window was a massive, massive, massive window. And it was exciting to see what these new owners were gonna do. You know, they had we have all this money. Who are they gonna sign? You know, as what are other clubs gonna offer us for players? You know, because they know we have all this money. So it was interesting to see and. We needed players that were going to help Newcastle see up. We really did. So it started off the first signing, which is probably the most iconic signing, to show what, you know, the team that Newcastle are progressing to be. We signed Kevin Trippier. And, you know, he is he is a, an England international. Um, He played for Athletic Club Madrid. And yeah, he started he started that January transfer window off and I think it made teams stop and think, Well, Newcastle are here. Newcastle are here, they are signing players. They are ones to watch. So, you know, we signed we signed some some the rest of the the rest of the players and um we came out in January and we came out in January absolutely fighting. We went on a nine game a nine unbeaten game record which was, had never been heard of in the history of Newcastle. And, yeah, a massive life was brought to that team since the takeover and Eddie Howe came in. Players who, such as Joe Linton, who, you know, was playing as a striker, and Eddie Howe would realise that he, he's he's a strong player and he was, he was in midfield. And, yeah, it was... I, I, honestly, I don't think I have the word. I think everyone knows... Um, what happened in the summer with Newcastle and you know we managed to stay up and we managed to um finish 10th and no team had ever who started the season on got Christmas on five points had ever stayed up and yeah there's a massive buzz to the um to the to the city to you know to the team to see what Newcastle do bring this this season you know we'd we had a really good January transfer window, and we've had a really good summer transfer window so far. There's a few, there's a few players, um, a few positions that we probably need filling with players, and yeah, the end of the end of the season was absolutely amazing. And from what you see online with the um, with the flags and the atmosphere in Newcastle in the stadium, is it the atmosphere in St James's Park? You know. It hadn't been seen before. It really hadn't, and it it finished the season finished, and yeah, I think us us um, Newcastle fans are so excited to see what what is to come from this team. What is to come from? What can Eddie Howe bring in? What can you know? It is it's amazing. Well, they might they might be living in Cuckoo Land. It's a fantastic club, Newcastle. 
Great Get club, into. great supporters, live for their club, come every week, wear their black and white striped shirts. A club that you'd love to see to have success again. You know, I, I was around playing teams, you know, playing against them when the Keegan days where they were incredible. The football was amazing. Amazing, Ginola and Andy Cole, you know, Ledge Ferdinand. It was just, they were great to watch, great to play against. No, this team's miles away from that at the moment. It's going to take a few years of hard work to get anywhere near getting back to them standards. They always used to push Man United, didn't they? Back in yeah. the 90s and, you know, an out, yeah, an outstanding team um, that Keegan built there. Um of course, Palace, Brentford and Villa um, finished just behind them. Um, so you think the t- teams that Newcastle overtook, you know, Brentford had a very good season. Hey, um, yeah, I don't know whether they, they, I think it's been a much tougher year this year. Much tougher. This year. They've done great. Absolutely mm-hmm. brilliant. New stadium. Done an amazing job. You know, the manager's done great. The stadium's new. But... Second year in, no Ericsson. It's going to be a much tougher year this year for Brentford. You know, look, where, it's amazing how the game goes. You know, we, we look back mm. two years, Bournemouth should have beat Brentford when Brentford went up that year. You know, when, yeah. when, when you know, Bournemouth in, in the playoffs, when, you know, the Bournemouth beat them at home, then go 1 0 up there and then they get a man sent off and get a diabolical penalty against them. It all, you know, but how they pushed on from there, Brentford, was amazing last season. I thought the football was great. The, the atmosphere was great. Um, it was a joy to watch, you know, and a real pleasure to watch how well they've done. But I do think this year will be a much, much tougher year. I really do. Hello, Natalie Sawyer here, Brentford fan, and very much looking forward to the new season. Our second season in the Premier League after our first really exceeded all expectations. We comfortably finished 13th. We were never in the relegation zone and we had some wonderful, wonderful results. You can look at the three-all draw against Liverpool, uh, doing the double over West Ham, uh, winning 4-1 at Stamford Bridge in a remarkable, remarkable game against uh, Chelsea. Um... We even lost 1-0 to Chelsea last season at home, but it was a game that was referred to as being being like like being in hell is what Ben, ben Chilwell referred it to. So I think that kind of gives you the flavour of what that match might have been like for Chelsea. Um, there were standout performances from a lot of our players. Christian Norgard, well, he won all the awards at our, our club awards. He was the rock uh, our defensive midfielder. I don't think any other player in the Premier League won as many tackles as he did. I think Ivan Tony had a credible first season, scoring 12 goals, but there's much more to his game than, than simply goals because he works so hard. He's one of those that defends from the front as well and always when it comes to defending set pieces, often is one of those to to get on the ball and clear it first as well. Um In terms of this coming season, well, we've done some transfer business already. Aaron Hickey has uh, come in, uh, normally plays left back, but will be playing right back for us, a a role um, and a position we've desperately been needing to fill. So he's he's in, as is Keen Lewis Potter from Hull. Uh, We've brought in the goalkeeper, Thomas Strakosha from Lazio. So he comes in with a lot of experience. Talking of experience, Ben Mee. He is a big, big bonus for us. He brings a lot of experience to that back line for for Brentford. But not only that, he is a leader on and off the pitch. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how he'll work out. Disappointment that Christian Eriksen decided to to move on. But uh, we'll let that one go now because that's in the past. We've got to look to the future. And what do I expect from this coming season? Well, I hope we won't have second season syndrome. I do believe in in the players and I do believe in Thomas Frank. I think he often prepares the team in a brilliant manner. He's such a positive boss. Um, And I know those at Brentford, talking of the ownership and the board and everything, they're planning for the long-term future of being in the Premier League. So that is still very much the aim, I'm sure, for Brentford to ensure that we will cement our position in the top flight. Um, I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm nervous because I feel teams may have worked us out a little bit uh, now having seen us for the first season in the Premier League. But like I say, we're a team that always seems to evolve and I'm hoping that we won't be dragged into a relegation battle this time around. Of course, you mentioned Ericsson there. But how much of it do you think was down to him? Because uh, Well, he was a great it, signing, wasn't he? He's a class player. Yeah. He lifted the players around him. You know, playing with him, they, 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 he seemed to, you know, he's... 
he's a real quality top top player so they're going to miss him this year for sure but they've got some other good players you know but i just wonder next year if they make the top half if they can get in the top 12 next year i think it'll be a real achievement i really i think it's going to be a tougher year for them with Ericsson, I thought he was going to have to take it easy when he come back because of what happened at the Euros. But, you know, he threw himself into it. You know, he was still exactly the same player that left that game, um, that awful yeah. scenes um, back between Denmark and Finland in summer. Yeah, no, he came back great and it was lovely to see, you know. He's a real class player, no doubt about that. Yeah, definitely. And, of course, Palace, uh, Patrick Vieira, we've mentioned Arsenal and, you know, their historic team. Um, but um, Vieira has not done a bad job there. No, good recruitment, uh, good players, good young players coming out of the youth team. Great area for producing players, South London, Crystal Palace area. Kids coming in there. That it's a real hotbed of football, you know, real a real area where footballers are coming from. Um, it, amazing, you know, they're just the players that, the, that you know, they, they've recruited well, the kid, the centre-half from Chelsea, um, you know, did ever so well from, like, the two boys from Chelsea last year, they, you know, were, were fantastic for them. Um, but no, they, they'll, they'll be good again, they'll be decent this year. They'll be decent, whether they make a top-half finish, I wouldn't be sure, but they'll be, they'll be decent, I'm sure. I don't see him getting. I don't see him being a relegation scrap. Hey, my name is Rich. I'm host of the YouTube channel Eagle Eyed Football, which predominantly covers Crystal Palace. And um, last season, <laughs> what a season it was for us. Um, honestly, extremely ecstatic with with what Vieira has done <clears throat> for our club. Um, obviously, there's a lot of um, you know a lot of doubters. Obviously, he hasn't had Premier League experience, but he came into the job and immediately transformed our, our side. Um, this is no discredit to uh, to Roy Hodgson, but you could feel like uh, there was only one way of playing under Roy, um, kind of reliant on on individual brilliance from like Wolf or Eze. Uh, but uh, Patrick's come in and made us such a, f a good passing team. Like, we've gone from predominantly counter attacking football to actually dominating the game predominantly especially at home so especially at home we're very very good at um <clears throat> keeping the ball you know um and also in recruitment as well and i think obviously Vieira had a, a massive play in this you know um, obviously a legend himself in bringing the likes of michael lisi in edward uh, will hughes and, and others obviously Joachim anderson gay Remy matthews so we did some very, very good business um, without spending absolute masses, you know. And I think what what was just incredible is, like I said, that we we came, became a possession-based team. You know, we played some extremely exciting football. We've got extremely um, exciting um, young players as well. And then you look through the season, it was a bit of a, a little bit of a ropey start, obviously getting used to Vera's methods. But then it was like, we're really good. We're a really good side. You know, we picked up some phenomenal wins and victories um, and points against the the top six. You know, obviously, away at the Etihad, obviously noticeable, and then home games against um, both uh, Tottenham and Arsenal, you know, which was absolutely incredible. Um, but obviously, one of the biggest highlights was our FA Cup run which was extremely phenomenal. Um, <clears throat> we, we even gave ourselves a very good chance against Chelsea. Uh, I'd say we didn't take our chances and they did. Uh, and that's kind of the difference, you know, um, especially with knockout football. You know, you have to be you have to be clinical, you know, and take the chances that you get because you may not get off a lot. But either, either way, we, we had an amazing cup run. The fans were amazing at Wembley. And um, it's just kind of left an air of um, excitement. You know, obviously leading into this coming season, um, the expectancy is there. To think that the amount of points we dropped last season from winning positions, we could have easily finished maybe in the top eight, which sounds mad, you know. Um, 
So I'm hoping that we can have another successful season. I don't want to go and jump the gun and say, oh, we must finish in the top 10. No, I think we should still obviously progress, still progress, um, keep our expectations high, you know, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, you know. Um, this is only year two now of, of the Vieira revolution and um, he, he's done a great job so far, so really excited. Um, and just to, to end on that note is... I'm going to say we finished 10th. That's, that's my prediction for the season. Uh, but all in all, I'm just happy with what we're doing, happy with the business we've done so far, this window, and just hoping that we can bring a few more players in. Last thing I've got to say is, up the Palace. And Stephen Gerrard's Aston Villa, um, you know, 14th last season. Um, yeah. I love Stevie. I think he's uh, destined to be a top manager. Um, something about him I, I really like you know if he's at the right club with the right players the right recruitment I'm sure he'll be a, a top manager one day and he'll get a big job he's got a big job now Aston Villa's a big club don't get me wrong Villa's a massive club but uh, and he's got a good squad good team he's improved them he bought players in so yeah I see Villa doing well next year I really do so at the moment we're struggling to find anybody who's not going to do well but yeah yeah. Well, there's a lot of decent teams there that will do okay, and then you've got the top teams that will be on a different level. Um, so all the teams you mentioned so far, you know, I think Brentford are probably the team out of that group that might find it tough next year. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm wrong because it's a good club, new stadium, good people running it. I hope they do well, but it's going to be a tougher season for sure. Hello, uh, Richard here from uh, the Villa Park podcast. Um, thoughts on uh, last season for Aston Villa. Also, uh, up thoughts for the upcoming season as well as uh, my predictions um, for where I think we'll finish. Um, first of all, last season, very much a roller coaster of a season. Obviously started off with the loss of Jack Grealish and then trying to replace him with a number of players. Obviously, Emi Buendia was brought in, Danny Ings and Leon Bailey. And the latter two, uh, Bailey and Ings, had very, very um, mixed seasons, um, big injuries and, and couldn't ever quite go in. And that kind of reflected Villa's season, really. Um, could never really get going, had um, periods of wins and decent wins, you know, Man United away. Um, one or two other victories, leads away later on in the season and one or two others but also mixed in with some very, very disappointing results and um, bad runs where culminating in Dean Smith losing his job and, and Steven Gerrard coming in. So it was always going to be a difficult one but I think as a, as a season it was one of missed, real missed opportunities and real disappointment to kind of stumble to the, towards the end of the season and finishing in 14th place. I um, was very disappointed for all, all Villa fans, but particularly with the promise of, of the players that were brought in. But I think a full pre-season for Gerrard, um, bringing in one or two players as well of his own, Bubakar Kamara coming in on a free, which was a, is, is a really big move. And Diego Carlos in particular is a fantastic signing as well as Philip Coutinho um, on a permanent and give us that little bit extra. I do feel like we need one or two more players, another really strong midfielder um, and a, a big centre forward can really give us presence because I, I feel like the Premier League now is going more into the more physicality again uh, and Villa really struggled with that last season so we really need to address that. But pre-season has been fairly, fairly good, fairly settled, no real injuries, players playing themselves back into form. Leon Bailey, particularly today against Man United, was fantastic. Um, and one or two other players, particularly the young players, Cameron Archer, uh, Tim Eric Bonham, uh, Kane Kessler-Hayden, doing really, really well as young players. So if we can bring some of those young players through, that obviously saves um, in terms of, of transfers and, and helps us buy some really, really, really top players um, as well. So... I'm hopeful going into the new season. Um, I think we are competing with the likes of Newcastle, Leicester, uh, Crystal Palace, um, West Ham, um, and one or two others for that probably 11th to 8th position. 
Um, and if we can get off to a really good start, um, who knows what can happen. One or two more players coming in would be great. Um, we bought my first game in the season, which can be can go one or two ways. Really, you know, a new team coming up um, can be can have that real bounce um, and can shock teams. But I have to say, with the squad that we've got, I, I will be confident going into that game. And you know, a good start can can set you up for a real good season. So I'm gonna say we will finish ninth. Um, and yeah, a top ten finish would be great. And to do very well in one of the cup competitions would be even better. So ninth position and a real good cup run would be would be great for Villa this season. Um, check me out on my YouTube channel at Villa Park Pod. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Villa Park Pod as well. And moving on to um, we'll skip Southampton until the end, of course, another one of your former clubs. But um, Everton, um, of course, managed by Frank. Um, yeah. And he did a very, very good job in awful circumstances. I think, you know, before he got there, you know, people could see that Everton were in dire straits. They still are. They still are. They still are. They still are. I mean, Frank's done a very good job, though. He did. He, he did what he did. All he could do with what he had, but unfortunately, mm. he's got a squad there that is. Bang average, at best. Mm. And I, I'm his biggest fan. And I, I kicked every ball for Everton last year, wanted to stay up. You know, every... I can't tell you how I was getting when Everton were playing. I just was so desperate for Frank to succeed because he's, he deserves it. He's a fantastic professional, great football man. But unfortunately, he's got no back in there. They brought no mm. players in. He's had to sell his main man. And what has he been able to bring in? A free trade for centre half, Tarkovsky. What, what has it? What have Everton bought? They're so short of quality in that squad. It is frightening. They look to me, unless they do something, they're going to be scrapping away in the same position as they were last year. I've got to be honest. Tarkovsky is a good signing, though. Yeah, decent signing, but he's a, he's a centre half. He's a decent player. Mm. You know, he ain't. They're Everton, there's a massive club. You mm. know, one of, again, one of the great clubs in football. A club where the supporters understand the game. You go there, they're knowledgeable. They've been brought up on great teams over the years in the past. Now they're seeing a bang average team. And that's what they are. I'm sorry, I can't really, I can't say much more about them. I look at their squad, I think they could be big, in big trouble. I really do, and I just hope I'm wrong because I, I'm desperate to see Frank do well and see Everton do well, but I, I do fear for him. Hi, Harry. Uh, Peter McFarlane here. I'm a season ticket holder at Everton. I've had my season ticket for 25 years now, so as you can imagine, I've seen plenty of ups and downs, mainly downs, if we're honest. Um, yeah, last season it started off with a very fractured fan base, to be honest, uh, with the appointment of Rafa Benitez, I think going into the season, um, we were we weren't sure what to expect. Um, if the if the Rafa Benitez from his Newcastle days and his Liverpool days was to show up, then we potentially could have could have done quite well. And um, the season started off okay. I think the first three or four games, we we look like we could potentially, you know, progress under Benitez, but that quickly fizzled out um, with one win in his last thirteen games in charge. Um, I think with Benitez, it was always going to be a case of, you know, that the fans did get behind him uh, to start off. To be fair to to, to Evertonians, um, but I think once once results started going against us, I don't think there was any way back for him. Um, and as I say, one win in thirteen, it, it it wouldn't be good enough for any manager in the Premier League, let alone a manager who'd, who'd previously managed one of our biggest rivals. Um, he wasn't going to be getting any any kind of leeway with the with the supporters. Um, and certainly going into January, I, I think a lot of Evertonians feared feared for what was going to happen. I, I think it was probably it wasn't quite um, apparent to people outside of the club just how bad things have had gotten under Benitez, and it wasn't just um, in terms of the results. It was the playing style. It was the the um, it, the whole club was just was just down and deflated. The players looked totally out of confidence, um, not just in the way they were playing football, but just generally you could see that they that they were all so low. Um and the fans as well. We we 
we just couldn't see a way out of it. Um, and thankfully, the Everton board acted. Um, and after you know a couple of weeks, they appointed your, your nephew, uh, Frank Lampard, who for me as an Evertonian has been a revelation. You'd be glad to hear. Um, we've we've accepted him. We've taken him in. We we were certainly calling for him to be appointed at the time as well. Uh, there was there was a protest outside Goodison Park before he was appointed, naming him as our preferred choice. So um, he he was welcomed with open arms by Evertonians. And as I say, maybe uh, people outside of the club didn't quite realise how bad things were. It took a while for for Frank to implement the changes into the side and into the playing into the playing style, um, you know, to get us to start picking up those results, but. The last 10 games of the season, uh, we really started to gel. And the players showed that fighting determination that we have that we come to expect from Everton players. Um, playing for Everton, one of the things the fans will always expect from their players, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're a world-class player or not, if you give everything for that shirt, we'll respond. And, and the fans really did get behind the team. Um, and, and I feel like the fans really got that team over the line towards the end of the season. And, and thankfully, we were able to stay up. So not a complete disaster of a season, given where we could have finished, and that could have been the championship. Um, but certainly, uh, it was it was a disappointing season for us. All, although the end of the season, and certainly with Frank Lampard coming in as our manager, it's given us reason for optimism. And um, this season's going to be it's going to be a difficult season. Uh, we, we we've still got the financial fair play uh, hanging over our over our heads in a sense that we we may not be able to go out and and spend lots of money um it certainly looks like richarlison may be on his way out which may free up some funds to be able to spend um richarlison's been a great servant for Evan football club and he'll be a, a huge loss for us but you know don't make the mistake of thinking he's not replaceable um i, I think that we've shown in the past that we are able to bring in decent players um the, the one issue I do have is that we've also managed to spend a lot of money on on very average players. So it, it's it's crucial that Frank gets his his um, his recruitment right this summer, um, and certainly if there's not much money to spend. But yeah, quietly optimistic for the season. If we can if we can get a few signings through the door and we can we can progress and and build on on those last sort of five or six games from last season. Um, I don't think we'll be we'll be pushing for a European place, um, but I'd I'd hope that we wouldn't be towards the bottom end of the league again. I think um, that that should have given us a wake up call, a much needed wake up call. Um, but I've got every faith that Frank Lampard, Lampard can get it right. And another team as well that's going to be in trouble or was in trouble last season. They managed to pull it out of the bag. Final game of the season was Leeds, um, and. Leeds, yeah, I think Leeds. You know, Leeds, it depends who they how they go with their squad. You know, they need Bamford fit. If he's fit, he can score. I like him. I was very impressed with Bamford. You know, the more I watched him, the more I liked him. The more I thought what a good player he looked. But he missed like a large part of the end, and certainly the end of the season. So, and they've lost a couple of top players. So, it's going to be a tough year for them as well. You know, we've got a new manager coming. Um, I, don't, I don't know. The big thing in their favour is that fanatical support. It's an intimidating place to go. You know, you know, when you've got a lead, you're not going to get an easy game. That crowd don't allow anybody to have an easy day. They live, they, they're again, they're, they're really very, very hostile and, and really supportive of their team. And it's quite an intimidating atmosphere. And so I think that's the big thing in their favour is their crowd. If they, they keep behind their team, they, they get behind them. Um, that is good. But other than that, at the moment, I'm looking at the squad and I'm thinking, well, again, I could see them certainly finishing in the bottom seven or eight. I, you know, I do fear for Leeds because I think, you know, Jesse March um, has taken over from Bielsa. I thought, you know, as a big Bielsa fan, I thought he did things you know, he's good. You know, he had that s- squad ingrained. And I think Marsh is putting his own stamp on things, isn't he? But I think it's losing two of your best players like they have done. Yeah. They're going to be in big trouble. Of course. You can't afford to lose your best players. You know, I keep saying it, and I'll say it a million times. Anyone can, you know, you need the most important thing you need to have a good team is good players. You know, I've seen managers who couldn't manage a whatever, 
and you know, winning things, nearly winning things. And I've got to be honest, no ability whatsoever really to manage, but had good players, and you know, so. Um, and unfortunately, there at the moment, this this squad doesn't look, look that strong. But as I say, the big thing in their favour is that fanatical support up there. Hi, my name's Liberty, and this is my season review for Leeds United and the Premier League. Starting off the season, we had a lot of optimism as we had just finished ninth the season before after 16 years of trying to get back in the Premier League. The saying that was getting flung about by a lot of people was second season syndrome and you could say we lived up to this. Uh, after finishing 17th in the Premier League this season, it was disappointing, stressful, but would it really be Leeds if there wasn't a dramatic finish? Now, the first game of the season, we played Manchester United. This was a 5-1 defeat for us. Um, and there was a few games this season that had the same kind of ending where we had conceded a lot of goals by the end of it. I think this is due to our injury crisis that we have going on or had going on. We have players like Patrick Bamford who's made nine appearances last season, Calvin Phillips made 20 appearances and Liam Cooper made 21 out of the whole season. Um, we also had players like Firpo, Roberts, Laurenti um, out for a uh, long period of time or still out and we had no players to come in and support the team as backups. At one point, I think we had nine of our starting 11 out injured. You'd think in the January transfer window, we would have made some uh, transfers. We would have had players coming in, but we had absolutely nobody. After this window, we had a 4-1 defeat against Tottenham Hotspurs. And this sparked the departure of Marcelo Bielsa, our um, manager. So... This was a very hard departure. I was very angry and upset, but it was something needed to change. We were fighting relegation and um, we just needed something new just to try anything desperately at this point. We brought in Jesse Marsh from Red Bull Leipzig and Red Bull Salzburg. And... In his first five games, he got us seven much-needed points, which widened the gap with Everton and Burnley, our relegation rivals. To end the season, we were playing Brentford. Now, at this point, Everton had made themselves safe, and it was between us and Burnley to go down. This game was full of excitement and stress. Um, I was definitely sat at the edge of my seat for the whole game, but it was chaotic and we managed to scrape a 2-1 win. And I did lose my voice from celebrating, but what can you expect? After the season we had, it was unexpected and I was very grateful. Um, and would it really be Leeds without a dramatic finish, like I've said? So I'm ready to do it all again next season next season i hope that we can finish maybe mid table and hopefully a lot less chaotic and stressful along the way and then of course the two teams um because we'll come to the four teams that you managed as well at the end but um fulham and forest um fulham are going about their business quietly forest well they're spending money like it's water. Yeah. Well, they're having the right go, aren't they? They're determined to stay yeah. up and full credit to the owners. Last year, they were a team made up of a lot of loan players. Uh, the manager did, you know, he came in and he recruited well. Steve Cook from Bournemouth was a fantastic signing. Fantastic yeah. signing. He was a no-brainer, a leader, a Someone in the, not John Terry, not in John Terry's class, but that type of a player who would put his life on the line, put his body on the line, 
it's led by example. I just thought he was an amazing signing for Knott's Forest. And from the day he went there, they took off and never looked back. So they recruited well last year, loaned well, but the loans have gone and now it's how good the players are that he's brought in. Jesse Lingard's a good signing for sure. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be interesting to see how the rest of the signings make out. If, they, if they've recruited well, they've got a big chance. I just don't understand why we sold Steve Cooks, Harry. Cook, you know, a good player. Good salt, good lad. You have pe you keep people like that, you club at your club forever. They're they they're the backbone of your football club. You know, when I look back at Bournemouth, you know, Steve Cook, Simon Francis, you know, Tommy Elphick they were fantastic, Smithy, they were Charlie Daniels, that they were incredible, incredible players who came through the divisions with that team and you know and Cookie, yeah, I'm a big fan of his, and I'm so pleased to see him do so well. How you doing, Harry? I hope you're well. Um, where to start with Nottingham Forest last season? And um, as everyone knows, the first seven games was absolutely shocking. Um, we had Chris Houston as manager, and um, it wasn't great football. And I went to every game, um, and I said the games like Stoke City, Derby, Coventry. Wasn't great at all, and when you play at six grand, toxic, if that's the word, and it wasn't like I said, it, it, we were bottom of the league, bottom of the league, and he had to go, had to go because it was getting worse and worse, and the way we were playing was going to League One, and then Steve Steve Cooper come in, and what can I say? The guy's a legend. Um, the first, the first months was unbelievable, um, and then around Christmas time, I think we only had two defeats in December, and then in the transfer window came in. We brought in important players: Steve Cook from Bournemouth, Keenan Davis, Stam Sir Sturridge from Stoke, and um, we even got stronger. And uh, I can't believe what he's done. Like, got from bottom of the league to the playoffs, to the playoff final, and we're back in the Premier League. And it's just amazing to, 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 to be talking like this. And 23 years of hurt, pain, whatever you want to say, and we're back in the Premier League. And I'm excited. I'm so excited. And But now we're back, we're back in the Premier League. Um, <laughs> it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. But... It's going to be more low moments and then high moments, but we're going to give it a chance and we're going to give it a good shot. Um, play against these big clubs. Um, we, I think this season, like I said, Steve Cooper is bringing in decent players, decent players, and we're going to give it, going to give it a right go. Um, I can't make, I'm just excited to be a Forest fan and being in the Premier League. I cannot wait and. I personally, I hope, I think we'll stay up. Just, just stay up. Like I said, every game is going to be massive, massive game, and um, I'm so excited to be a Forest fan. Just, yeah, I'm buzzing. I can't wait, and yeah, bring on the new season. Yeah, I was delighted to to see him Forest go up, um, but at the same time, you know, I'd love him still in our squad, but. Fulham, of course, they've got Mitrovic up front. Um, he's never really done it in the Premier League. It's going to be a but... big, di big difference, you know. Now, big, mm. that's the challenge, you know. Scored goals in the Championship, much different in the Premier for him. You know, he's not going to get them that many opportunities like he did. He's not a player who's going to create that many chances on his own. He gets on the end of things, on the end of crosses. I like him, good player. But, you know, he's not going to get bundles and bundles of opportunities to score like he did last year in the Championship. So, it'll be interesting, you know, Fulham, yeah, if they survive this year, again, they'll keep saying it, another good club. Good atmosphere. When you went there, nice people, nice good fans, good atmosphere, nice place to go and watch football, I always felt. Nice place to go with a team. And, you know, you'd like to see them stay up, but... And they, they, they could well do, but it's not going to be easy. It's going to be a tough season for them. You know, they did well last year, but next year in the Premier, big step up. They'll be one of the teams that are going to be scrapping away to stay up. There's no doubt about that. 
Evening guys, okay, this is a video that Craig has kindly asked me to do for his interview this evening with Harry Redknapp. Um, at the end of the interview, interview, it'd be good to get your guys' thoughts on where you think Fulham will finish, um, especially Harry, given his sort of wheeler dealer sort of background in management. Obviously, Craig, always interested to know your sort of uh, personal opinion as well. Um, just a little bit to do with Fulham last season. Obviously, we sort of run away with a championship um, mostly, obviously not as high as points tally as some of the other teams the last few seasons. Um, but again, the football's been sort of there, there for all to see. If we can sort of bring that into Premier League, but with a sort of bit of astute sort of signings as well, um, keep us all tight defensively as well at the back, which I think newly promoted sides always need to do to a degree. Um, and obviously take your chances going forward, especially the clear cut ones. And I think we're going to have a better season. Um, the signings we're looking to make over this summer at the moment, players being linked, as you already know, this week. Some may have signed by the time this this sort of uh, video goes out. Uh, Paulina um, from Sporting Lisbon, Solomon from Shakhtar Donetsk. Straight away, that's two, I think, fantastic signings for a club of our stature at the moment and can help us to survive this season. Again, there's still other players moved to the round Pereira from Manchester United. He'd be a good addition. Um, to improve this, obviously, departing Fabio Carvalho. While I don't think he's quite the player to fill that void just yet, he's still young and with enough potential to see if Silva can bring that out of him. Um, again, like I say, signings this season would hopefully be decent. That will be key to whether we stay up or not, you know, defensively especially, as we're very short there on real quality. I think as Romagnoli from AC Milan is touted, um, deal agreed, but he's waiting to see if his first offer from, I think, Lazio comes in. Um, personally, I'm a little bit disappointed. I can understand why, but I think we should be going for players players that want to play for the club. That being said, if he does sign later later this week or next week, <laughs> who am I to disagree? And I won't be unhappy with that signing whatsoever. Moving on to this season, my prediction would be based on the signings we get in, clearly. At the moment, I see us in the bottom three. If we get the signings we want to, Fulham could finish anywhere from rock bottom to comfortably mid-table. I'm going for a prediction of 15th this year. But again, that can change dependent on signings and again, what, how, how big of an impact the signings do have. Hopefully it's positive. Uh, based on the last two two times we've been in the Premier League, it can only be more positive. So fingers crossed, hopefully you do well this year. Craig, Harry, over to you guys. Enjoy the rest of your pod. Let's go on to the four teams, of course, that you managed. Um, and should we start with Spurs? So we did touch on very briefly, but um, Spurs, of course, in the Champions League, um, yeah. they did very well a couple of years back. Um, to get to the final, um, could they bro- And what do they need to do to break into that top two? Because they well, do they look in the top four game last year. They're finishing the top four quite regular in the last ten years or so. Really, um, no, they'll be up there again. They've signed good players. The recruitment's been good in the summer. They've brought in some good players. The boy from Brighton, Basuma, is a good player. He's a proven yeah. player at the top level in the Premier League. Good player, he'll give them a, he'll be a massive plus for them. Um, you know, I, I think they've made some good signings. I, I think they're going to be, they're going to be, be up there challenging for, you know, certainly I think for that. If anyone's going to challenge the top two this year, I think it'll be Tottenham. I don't say they're going to overtake Liverpool, and Man City, but I do think it's, it looks a very good, strong Tottenham squad, squad strong team. I certainly don't see them finishing out anything. If they were at the top four this year, it would be a disaster with that squad, I think, with that stadium, with that training ground. Now they've got the players, got a manager they like. He's got to finish a top four again this year. And I could certainly, I, I could see him, for me at the moment, they'd be finishing third. Hi, Craig Beasley. So, uh, Tottenham, a little bit of an overview. Uh, last year, started off pretty painful watching Nuno. Um, don't get me wrong, I think he's a good manager. He's done great stuff with Wolves, but Tottenham wasn't the fit. Levy wasn't the fit at that time, the scrounge. But it just didn't work out. Conte came in, I think it was, I don't know, Conte came in a little bit earlier than this time, but October, November time, if you look at Tottenham's points per ratio, 
I think Conte's in the top three uh, since he came in charge of Tottenham. So he's done a really good job and uh, we've done something at Tottenham that we've never done this season. We've done our business early so they can actually have a pre-season. So that's quite exciting. I just hope, I just hope that we can improve on last season. An improvement on last season would be a challenge for me. It would be a challenge to the title. Even if that challenge lasted till January or February, that would I'd be humble for that. And a cup run, if not a cup win. Anyway, over and out. And then, of course, a Southampton, another one of your old teams. But, yeah, they're gonna, um, they, yeah, again, I don't really know what to expect mm. from them this year. They're, I don't think they're going to find it easy again. I think it's going to be a tough season for them, you know? They struggled a bit last year at times. Keeping if they keep Ward Prowse, that's a big bonus. If I was a manager of any top club, I'd take Ward Prowse. I think he's a fantastic player. He looks a great lad, great on set plays, can play, pass it, gets around the pitch. I think he's a real good player. Um, I'm surprised no one's coming to try to buy him. Really, um, probably one of those players that goes under the radar a little bit, and people, but. Um, no, I mean, they, they, their centre-forward did well last year. They've lost. He's gone back to Chelsea at the moment. Looks like he might go to West Ham. So, he's a loss. No, I think Southampton's going to be a hard season for them. They're going to be down there again, scrapping in the bottom six or seven, I think. That's, I can't see anything else other than that, you know? Oi, oi, my little Savaloys. Jack here from Matchday Pods, where we talk all things Southampton. We're back. New season. Let me just tell you about the end of last season. End of last season, we dropped off. We got to January and just in there. We conceded goals. We couldn't score goals. We were just inconsistent. Just players that were so good at the beginning just dropped off. It was it was it was, it was bad. So how have we remedied all of these problems? First of all, the thing that not a lot of people talk about was after something else. Did my head in all the last season. Our coaching staff, we had five goalkeepers. We didn't have any outfield players coaching our outfield players. Our strikers weren't striking. And we had no one to tell them how to do that. It was very frustrating. Since Ralph lost his assistant coach a couple of seasons ago, we never really replaced him. So what's the first thing Sports Republic did very early into our summer this year? They got us a whole new coaching staff. Whole new coaching staff. You know, there's, there's movement happening on that Southampton bench. So that's the first thing to take into account. We needed players. Most pundits, most news sources will tell you that Southampton have not been busy this transfer window. Incorrect, my friend. This is the highest spend of this transfer window Southampton have ever had. 50 million spent so far, and not a single outgoing player. Not to say anything's going to happen, there are a few boys that are on the chopping block for sure. <laughs> he is definitely one of them. So we brought players in, Bella Coche, oh, Joe Arrigo in, in that number 10 role is going to be immense. Something we have seen a lot in the preseason is Southampton playing a new formation, 3 4 2 1 instead of the 4 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 2 and it seems to be still Armstrong and Aribo playing this beautiful number 10 role behind a lone striker. The issue we have is that this lone striker right here. Yeah. Well, this one here. From what I can see, I'm not confident that those two are decent enough lone strikers. There's stuff to improve for sure. But we've taken a lot in. And I do mean a lot in. It's a whole new look Southampton this season. Young, exciting. Anything could happen. Where am I predicting us this season? I'm not. I'm, I'm not over exaggerating. I think 12th, 13th, 14th, the top half of the bottom. I'll take that. I will, in fact, take that. Be a big South Coast year. No hatred for the South Coast clubs they're in the Prem. The one that we don't like is in League One. Ain't that right, Harry? So, Southampton this season. Gonna be exciting. It's gonna be exciting. How confident am I? As confident as I am beautiful. 
Oh no! I just think they need better players. They need, a, mm. you know, you need. If you give him Man City's team, he'd probably win, he'd win the league. I'm sure. You know, you give him Liverpool's team, he'd, he'd, he'd be up there finishing first or second. But he's he's got what he's got. He's got to work with what he's got, and he can only do what he can with what he's got. And what he's got is a decent team, decent squad, but a squad of players that really I see finishing, you know, bottom seven. Mm -hmm. I really do. I, you know, it's a good club again, good training ground, nice stadium, good club. But I don't see that squad being anything other than sort of bottom seven, bottom eight, really. That's where I see him finishing, certainly in the bottom eight. And, of course, one of the best academies in the entire country, if not yeah, the best. Yeah, well, they have, yeah. It goes in cycles, academies. Academies, you know, what, what's come out of it the last couple of years? I'm not sure. Mm. Hit me with a few. Not many, I don't think. No, that's what I'm saying. No. I mean, it's like, right, yeah, Gareth Bale, 15 years ago, whatever. You <laughs> had, you know, you, you had Adam Lallana, you know. You had uh, Theo Walcox. You had, you had good players, lots of good players, you know, the lads. Who, but then suddenly, it's hard. It, it's hard to fight, keep finding good kids and producing them. And you have to get them in your team. It goes in cycles. Man United have had it. We'd have had six. West Ham, when I was there, had it. we had six kids all going and play. It, and at the moment, um, you know, it's hard to keep producing kids. I've had to produce lots of kids over the years. But... At the moment, they, they, he hasn't got time to worry about, you know, playing a load of kids. He's got to stay in the division. That's Ralph's job this year. And he's he's done a good job, I think, with what he's had. But um, it's what he's got is what he, he's at. The hand he's got to play with is a hand that, as I say, for me, it's a bottom eight hand. That's what he's got. He's got nothing else he can do about it. And I don't care, again, you put Pep Guardiola in there. He's not suddenly going to finish in the top six. He's got what he's got. West Ham, um, Dumbledore you know, where well, you, yeah. oh, outstanding, um, you know, finishing seventh with, and David Moyes has, you know, really started to replicate what he did at Everton all those years ago. Um, he's built a good squad and do you think they can push on West Ham? Yeah, it's hard to get in that top six when you look at it, isn't it? But, they yeah. recruited well. They bought good players in. The two Czech boys were good players, good signings, a right back and a big midfield player. Declan Rice has now come to be, you know, top, top, top midfield player. Uh, Bowen was a fantastic signing from Hull. I saw him play for Hull City and I thought, why ain't someone buying him? Why ain't someone buying this kid? He looks a real player. And eventually West Ham came and took him. Great signing, you know. They've got the signing of last season for me was Dawson from Watford. Yeah. Couldn't get in Watford's team on the season before, whenever he came. Might have been the season before last, sorry. But like for £2 million, he was in, the, and I'm thinking, hang on. But that was a really, that was a signing David Moyes made that only a British manager would have made. No foreign manager would have signed Dawson. They wouldn't have even known him. But David Moyes, knowing the lower divisions, knowing players that have been around the block. Look, knew that he would come in, he'd head it, he'd put his body on the line. A bit like Steve Cook, we were talking about a leader. Scored goals from set plays. Just a fantastic signing. And he's been a real, a real bonus, I think, for uh, for West Ham. So, yeah, they've got a good squad, a good atmosphere, good group. Again, yeah, I can see him finishing 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th. Somewhere, you know, hopefully they can push on, make the top six. But it's going to be hard. They just, you know, it might just be, it might be getting a centre forward. If they do, it changes again. Then I can see them finishing top six. They go and get somebody else to uh, take a bit of the workload off Antonio. But West Ham can give anybody a game. Anybody. You go and play them now and you know you're going to get a real tough game. I watched them last year. They could have beat... Liverpool's, they could have beat the Man City's up at West. They, they gave anybody a game. They're a good team. And, uh, yeah, I do think if they can get another centre forward to give them a little bit of strength, because if Antonio gets injured, they've got a problem, then they, they could be pushing for a top six place. If not, it might be seventh or eighth a game. But another European run like this year would be great. It's a great club. And, uh, 
you know, it's they, they've done very well. David's done a good job there for sure. Hello, Harry. Hello, Craig. Um, thanks for having me on to give you my predictions and that of West Ham uh, last season. I've got to be honest, I think it was an amazing season. Um, all the boys did remarkably well considering the amount of players we had in our squad and unfortunately I think that showed towards the end. Um, just run out of a bit of steam. Um, we should have got top six really but unfortunately we never seemed to do very well against Brighton. Um, but still, European football two years in a row, can't complain about that. And all just missing out on reaching the Europa League final. All in all, I think it was a brilliant season all round. Um, hopefully next season we can build on it and bring a few extra players in. Uh, I'm on holiday in Turkey at the moment, so I haven't really seen the news, who's coming in, who's coming out. I've just seen a bit that... And I think we've made Ariola permanent and brought in a new centre-back that should bring a bit of pace into the squad. So hopefully we can build on last season and um, hopefully get top six, push for top four again, bring a new striker in to help Mickey up top, get a few extra goals and hopefully we'll be right up there again. Uh, thank you for having me on and uh, all the best. Hi guys, thanks a million for having me on. Um, yeah, West Ham, what a season. Harry Redknapp, legend. Um, I suppose last season corresponded to maybe 1999 and our Intertoto Cup run, which uh, it's very apt that Harry's on um, chatting to you guys because yeah, yeah, he gave us a great journey then. I was about only 17, 18 at the time, so I didn't get to experience it uh, as much as I would have liked. But um, yeah, fair play, Harry. Um, the stories and the memories live on. Um, last season, I suppose, for us at West Ham, um, Europa League took precedent when it came to, especially when it came to the end of the season. Uh, we really ran out of steam um, after a great start. Um, and even you know being contenders in the top four was, was an amazing achievement from, the, from a, such a small squad. Um, I suppose when you th when when I think back, you know, we were very competitive in some of the you know against some of the traditional top six clubs, um, and because we were able to break in to that the season before and f after finishing sixth, yeah, you know, we really wanted to try and maintain that. Um, and uh, unfortunately, as great as the European run was, and it's given us memories, a lot of us fans memories for forever. There's so many to choose from, you know, Seville, you know, everything like from start to finish. Uh, it was absolutely incredible. I'm sure Harry enjoyed watching it too. We were all uh, highly emotional um, over the course of the season, watching them games and going to them. I was lucky enough to go to a couple as well. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, listen, I suppose with regards to the league, we, we seriously ran out of steam um, towards the end. Our squad, our squad depth really hurt us. Losing of Bonner at the start of the season didn't help, even though Dawson came in and played an absolute blinder. Him and uh, Zuma were brilliant, and special mention to Diop, who who came in when Zuma got injured. Um, you know, he really he really played well in Europe as well. So every, everyone contributed, um, but like that, we just ran out of steam. We didn't have enough squad. Our our our, our probably main kind of 12, 13 players got tired towards the end, and uh, yeah, coming down the home stretch, even the last game against Brighton, you know, we just didn't have enough. Um, this season, what do we do? We lost five players in the summer. Uh, this summer already, so we have to replace them. Um, yeah, we we brought in a centre defender, but you know we have Kral and Noble. We need we don't have them anymore, so we need um, we need to uh, get replacements in for them, and not just replacements, but guys that can really push uh, Rice and Socek um, for a certain position. Um, we still only have one striker, um, so we need we need uh, help for Antonio, uh, even though to be fair to him. Hamstrings uh, lasted the season, but uh, like that, he he looked tired towards the end. Um, this season, where can we finish? I'm hoping we can still we can still push and stay in around seventh. I think the fact that we have a settled team and a settled squad might help. Moyes might help us with points, especially when we're defending. 
Um, it's going to be hard for team to try, teams to grind us down because, as you know, Moyes is brilliant at set piece, especially defending and attacking them. Um, there's, I look at Villa, I look at, at, at Newcastle, they're going to spend a lot of money this summer. Um, they, them, two, them two clubs really want to go places. So, you know, how do we, how do we stay in the top six, seven position? It's going to be very, very hard. Hopefully, maybe Man U or Arsenal um, won't invest in the right ways and, and they might slip down the table a bit. And, and give the rest of us an opportunity to try and, and, and hold into the top six. But um, yeah, listen, we, we can't complain. We've, we had a great season last season and uh, hopefully we can push on and try and maintain that again and get three years in a row in the top six, seven spots. But uh, for me, Stevie Zizza from Twitter, thanks very much for inviting me on and I wish everyone the best season. And we all look forward to going down to Bournemouth away, uh, one of the best away days, if you can get a ticket. See you guys. See you, Harry. Bye, guys. And let's talk about ourselves. Um, so, of course, we finished second last season. Um, you know, that dramatic game against Nottingham Forest that we won. Um, we've only made two signings, uh, Ryan Fredericks and also uh, Joe Rothwell. But, you know, surely there's got to be a couple more coming through the door. We, we need a centre-back. Would you agree? Well, yeah, I mean, you, if you lose a boy, you've lost Gary Cahill, who I thought did excellent when he played last year for the first yeah. half of the season. And now you've lost, if you haven't got a set big centre half back from Liverpool, um, Phillips, then you've got a big hole to fill. I mean, you've got to get somebody in. You've got to give Scott a chance. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying about management. Last year, the squad was too good for the, you know, it was a team that he, at the start of the year, you looked at it, I, I thought they were serfs to finish in the top two last year with that squad, and they did. Now this year, you're looking at them, same manager, same training sessions, same coaches, same everything. What's he got to do? A miracle to now get them, keep them up? I mean, mm-hmm. it's all about players, as I keep saying. At, at Bournemouth at last year, yeah, they had the players that were up there for the championship. Now he's got players that are down there for the Premier. So that's probably how they'll finish. They'll be struggling, struggling to stay up with that squad. If it can make two or three good signings, he'll give them, he might have a chance. Other than that, it's going to be very, very difficult. I'll go every week. I love them. I want to see them stay up. I want to see them win games. It's going to be very difficult. Hello, all. Hello, Harry. Uh, Al Guard in Brittany. Hope you're all well. Lovely afternoon here. Um, Right, let's look at last season. Scott Parker, Mission Impossible. Do you accept the task? Your task is to get us promoted. And he duly did. And with a few worries in between, we started off with 15 games undefeated and we didn't actually get beaten until November the 3rd, a Preston at home. Um, And that was for the second year running. We were the the last team to be beaten in the EFL, which was... um, which was pretty good. Or, you know, the previous season, yeah, OK, it all happened against Brentford and it all fell apart. But the essential thing this season was to get up and we, we've done that. Um, if we look at the, the table after 15 games, there's, um, there's AFC Bournemouth at, at, clearly at the top of the table. And if we go much further down, and we've got to go quite far down, um, here we go. Uh, oh, look, there's Notts Forest at the bottom, OK? As, as we keep getting reminded by Forest fans, Forest have done so well to come up and eventually challenge us uh, at the last but one game of the season. So fair play to them. We've had a, we had a wobble in mid-season. Well, we couldn't beat Peterborough twice, which was which was a little bit shocking. Yet then we've gone away and we've won three 0 at Blackburn, Coventry, Huddersfield with fantastic controlled performances uh, and attacking performances um, instead of being a little bit negative, which we were mid-season when we started the panic. Uh, and then we come on to the Forest game. More, more, more. How do you like it? How do you like it? Hoodwinkery, skullduggery. Kiefer Moore. Fantastic. And up we went. So we move on to the next season. So we, we had the, what we required. And here we are for our sixth season. Uh, second visit to the Premier League. Already uh, we've got a couple of signings in. Uh, Fredericks and Rothwell. Great name for undertakers, by the way. Um, where are the points coming from next season? Well, it's, it's early to say because obviously there's more signings going to come in at July the 1st when uh, the contract's finished and we can start bidding up the players, unsetting players, probably not as much as West Ham do. 
Where are the points coming from next season? Now, assuming we're going to finish in the lower half, and that was, we'd take that, wouldn't we? We wouldn't, I'm not talking bottom three, we would take the lower half. <clears throat> it's essential that we do pick up the points with the teams that we know are going to be around us. <clears throat> and I put these, this little grouping, like, teams we need to get four points against. A win at home, or a win away, and a point. So I've got Brentford, Fulham, Villa, Southampton, Forest, and Everton. Why can't we get four points off them, home and away? Not a real problem. That's 24 points. Hey, we're getting there. Three pointers. Teams we can beat at home might struggle a little bit away. Wolves, Brighton, Leeds, Palace, Leicester. A couple of times we put four past Leicester last time. So there's another 15 points. We're on 39 points, guys, ladies, guys. A point. Teams we're going to nick a point off over two games. Why not Arsenal, West Ham, Man United and Eddie Howe's Newcastle, which Eddie might do us a favour. Uh, we might beat them three or four. But there's another four points. So I've got us on 43 points. And then we go to the anything goes games, any points that we can take. You know, Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea, Spurs. Anything we can get, be fine. My Chelsea, we normally beat anyway. And Spurs, we've done over once, so that was good. Look, there's been a few rumblings about the, the sponsors, which is uh, another another betting company, which is Defabet. But look, it doesn't matter if it's Benson Edges, Rothman, Silk Cut, whatever. Get behind the team. Don't get behind the team sponsors. Get behind the team. And with our 11,000 packed into the ground and all behind the team, we'll pick up the points we need to survive. What do you reckon, Harry? I reckon we're good. I'd be happy with 17th, to be honest, oh, Harry. Absolutely. Um, oh, for sure. Absolutely. But, if anything, just to stay up. Do you think, though, that the two youngsters that emerged last season, um, Jaden Anthony and Jordan Zamora, do you think that they can kick on in the Premier League? Yes, I do, yeah. I do. I think they can give anyone problems. I, we're not a lost cause, even if we don't get anybody, but it's going to be tough. But them two can be a threat to anybody, anybody down that stick. They've got pace and ability. Uh, I love the way they played. Solanke, I think he improved and improved and improved. And this year he could he could well score goals in the Premier. I think he, he's still he's now showing the ability that we all felt he had at Chelsea before he went to Liverpool. And I, I think he could be a top player. So, yeah, we, there's lots of pluses there. Um, but... In other areas, we look short, you know. Um, but let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that we can uh, we can survive. It will be an interesting season. I'm sure we'll beat some teams, good teams on the way. We'll lose a few, some teams that you think we might get points against. But as long as we end up with enough points to stay up, but it's going to be a tight, it's going to be a tough one. Scott's got his work cut out this year. Yeah, most definitely. For, at the moment. You know, and I, I know, of course, things might change. You know, we've got a week and a, well, two weeks effectively before the start of the season. Who do you think out of Man City and Liverpool will win the league? Because I can only imagine it would be that between those two, in your mind. Yeah, uh, I'd like to see Liverpool win it this year. I must be truthful. Man City have been incredible. I'd like to see Man City win the Champions League. It'd be nice to see them win that. Um, but I'd like to see Liverpool win it in front of the fans. They won it that year, there were no fans. It'd be lovely, lovely to see them win it in front of the fans. It's a great club. Um, I think it's a toss up. I think it's going to be tight between the two of them. They're, they're two fantastic teams. Uh, you know, eight big odds on Man City to win it. You're probably just about maybe have to fancy Man City, but I wouldn't write Liverpool off. I just, they've got a great spirit at the club as well. Uh, the manager they love, seem to love playing there, and he, you know, he's got great players and he gets the best out of them. It looks like he creates a good atmosphere. But um, they're two top teams. It's going to be tight, and I think Tottenham will get a lot closer to the pair of them this year. Man United will do a lot better this year as well, I think, if he gets another two or three players in. And it looks like they might do. They, they, they've got to do better than they did last year. Can he get sure fit, who's still in that standing left back? You know, can he... He's bought, he's bought one or two in. That might make a difference now. But he's still short of a quality midfield player. Who can control, he's got Ericsson, but another, maybe another central midfield player. 
Um, but yeah, they, I'm sure they'll they'll be a lot better than they were last year, Man United. But again, I, I, yeah, I, I think it's, it's it will come between the top two probably. And for the remaining two places in the Champions League, um, I'm guessing Spurs is probably going to be up there Spurs based and on Chelsea, what you said. I think. Spurs and Chelsea. We've posted in there. Man, I think Man United might finish fifth. Or oh, if anyone's going to not one of them two out of it, I think it might be Man United this year. I think they'll do a lot better than they did last year for sure. They got to, but I'm sure they will. Do you think West Ham might be able to? Because Arsenal's the only one of the top current top, top six. Four, it'd be difficult for West Ham. I mean, it's good. You know, they're they're good and uh, they've done great. But to make the top four, I think their squad might just be a little bit short of being top four. Still, they can finish in the six again. That's for sure. And get in the top six, but they're going to be involved in Europe. I'm sure they have a good European run, and it stretched the squad a bit last year for them. You know. But they were great nights, I'm sure, at West Ham. Fans would have loved the European nights. Um, but no, I'd love to see them be up there pushing for that top four. But I think that might just be beyond them at still at the moment. And let's look at the other end of the table as well. Um, of course, this is where we're going to probably be in the mix. Yeah. Um, and, you know, hopefully we won't finish below the line hopefully we'll finish just above it um yeah. i can't imagine much more than that but which three do you think are gonna go down uh, the team i fear for everton i do fear for everton and i don't want to because i'm so desperate to see him and see frank do well but i just look at that squad and i'm scared i really am i find it uh, I'm hoping they survive. You know, Southampton's another team that could be down in the mix this year. But it's, you've got a Brentford could be in it this year again. There's none of them I look at it. Oh, I'd like to see them go. They're, they're all clubs that I've, I've got a lot of admiration for. You know, not Forest. Look at them, where they've been. Mm. You know, I go back to Brian Clough days. They're a fantastic club, great tradition. But and they they're bought and if he's, if the players that have come in are decent, they could well survive this year. I mean they've had a right go and I think he, they could keep up. I think if the of the three teams that have come up, they'd be I'd put, you know if you said have a bet on the three of them, I'd put them finishing highest at the moment. Even though they finished lowest last year, the three, I think they could finish highest of the three this year. I think if they. But it depends on the recruitment. So I'm not, I wouldn't know enough about all the players they've brought in to know how good they are. So, But I'm sure the manager would know. He knows what he's doing, that's for sure. And if they're recruited, the players are good, uh, as good as you know they hope they are, and they settle in as quickly, then uh, they, they, could, they could finish. They could get out of trip. They could be out of the bottom three. But it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for Bournemouth this year. It really is, unless we get some pl- couple of players in. Um, but I'm praying that we're okay, you know, and Fulham the same. They've got a tough season, you know. Yeah. The Fulham fans know that. They came up a couple of years ago and then they couldn't score a goal in the champ in the Premier. They were the lowest goal scorers, you know. But they came up with a team that was full of goals and playing great football. So that's, it's a big gap, you know, and it's going to be a tough season for six or seven teams there. I, the teams I mentioned, I think they're all going to be in a scrap. Here's a question. So Mitrovic had a fantastic season last year. Solanke, you know, had a fantastic season himself. Um, You know, did finish a few goals behind, but who do you think will be the top scorer out of those two? Next year? I don't know, a difficult one. Mitrovic certainly scored a lot of goals. Um... I don't know. I think Solanke could be, you know. I think Solanke could score, you know. But it's a difficult one. You know, Fulham, as I say, he he relies an awful lot on service, balls into the box. And there's a handful when balls come into the box. But he's going to be getting up against different markers this year. You know, suddenly the Van Dykes of this world, you're not going to be, you know, battering them. And it's going to be a lot tougher for him. But, you know, he, he, he has done great, Mitrovic, there's no doubt. But I think if you had to ask me to have a bet on the two, I'd probably probably put my money on Solanke and score more goals. I don't think either, I don't think either of them are going to get 
20 or get bundles, but I think that, you know, they'll get their share because they're both good finishers. And I think Solanke's grown since, you know, to be honest, he was probably the player that benefited the most out of relegation because he's grown in the championship. Would yeah. you agree? Yeah, his movement is good. I like his movement. I think he's clever. He, he, he posts himself up in the box, takes it in the feet now. Um, I still think there's little parts of his game. You know, I think when it comes into him, he has to hold it more rather than looking to lay it off and back into people and turn and get his shots off. That's saying I've worked with him on, on a daily basis. But no, I like Solanke. I think he's... Uh, I think he's, he's a good player and I can see why Eddie Howe and one or two other people have been mentioned as to looking at him, but we can't afford to sell him for sure. And it'll be great to go back up to Newcastle and that reunion with Eddie, um, who's, you know, a hero. He always will be a hero here, won't he? Oh yeah, but he's going to want to smash, it, smash Bournemouth to pieces. Do you think so? Oh, absolutely. Of course he will. Of course he will. He want to beat beat them badly. Yeah. Absolutely, that's football. Anyone who thinks otherwise, when players <laughs> score, they don't celebrate. It's the biggest load of rubbish I've ever seen. Yeah, but mm. Of course you want to. You want to. You think have some of that, and they run away. They played it up. You know they've already played the game, and, and oh, I can't celebrate. When you, of course you, Eddie's going to look at that. I mean, Tindall, Jason, they're going to want to beat Bournemouth. Of course they will. Mm. They're not going to want to get beat by Bournemouth. That'd be the, probably the game they want to win more than any other game. The truth, no. Uh, anyone saying otherwise is kidding themselves. And I think, that's you know... That's, I... how it, that's how it works. You don't go, oh, it don't matter today, we're playing Bournemouth, you know. <laughs> it's just nice to have played Bournemouth, you know, I managed them. And we, you know, when you go, he's, he's going to want to come back. He'll get a great reception, but make no mistake, he deserves a great reception, Eddie, that's for sure. But when he comes back, he's going to want to... He's going to want to hammer them. Of course he will. You know, he did I... leave on the, in the best way when he left the club. Mm. You know, he, he, didn't, he didn't walk out, I don't think. It was, I think it was a mutual consent or whatever. I mean, Eddie's... Eddie's don't kid yourself that Eddie suddenly, you know, doesn't want to... He's not bothered if he beats Bournemouth or... He'll want to, he'll want to beat him badly. Make no mistake about that. You know, it'd be just great to see him and, you know... Great to see how he does, and you know, hopefully, he helps that team kick on, and you know, keeps improving year on year. But um, probably not third in the table. No, like no, definitely, definitely not. Third. I'll forget that. Get, I'm the man to take your money. You're hundred to one. Newcastle finishing in the top three. I, I don't think I'll do it actually. After listening to, to you, listen. I'll bash into your account. Have a have a tenner. Because I'd love to pay you, but I'm afraid you've not got a prayer. No, I don't think I have, to be fair. You, you think, I don't know whether you think Eddie Howe is uh, Houdini or someone, but he's not. He's, he's Eddie Howe, yeah. not Houdini. He can't get them in the top three. Yeah. Do you think um, he will eventually be the next England manager? I don't know. No idea. Stephen Gerrard, fantastic. I don't know, really. Difficult to say, Frank Lampard, if he could do well at Everton, he would be another one who would, you know, depends who knows how their careers go. Listen, if Eddie don't do well at Newcastle, he'd be under pressure in no time here. Yeah? They love him at the moment. Of course, they love him. He's done great. You know what the game's like. You're, you're only about eight games away from the second, you know. They've gone a bad run. Oh, well, it's, that's how football is. It's the most fickle game in the world. You know, yeah, who knows? By the time the England job comes up again, could be anybody who's flying, doing well. I'd like to so say I don't care as long as it's another English manager. That's all I want to see manager in England, an Englishman. Graham Potter, as well. He's another yeah, he's name. Okay. That's yeah, he's steady. steady. Yeah. Done steady. Yeah. Decent. Yeah, he's... Good manager. Nice boy. Nice lad. Looks a good sort. You know, has he got the magic? You know what? Listen. I keep saying it. This England team there is a great team to manage because it's got fantastic players. Great mm. team to manage. Great time to manage England with them players. You ain't got to be a genius to do well with that England team, believe you me. Have a look at them. Have a look at them man for man. You know, 
there's some incredible talent there. You've got Harry Kane, you've got the best centre forward in the world of his type up front for you. You've got people like Grealish, Foden, incredible talents who can do things, you know. Declan Rice, the team's full of talent. It's a, it's a team that should be James, you know, Trent. Pick a right back out of all them. Walker, I mean, yeah, the players we've got, we should be winning something, you know. Um, it's about time we won a World Cup or won a Europe. We should have won the European Championships last time. We should have won the World Cup, really. We had an easy draw, best draw you've ever seen. Didn't play a decent team on the way through. Then we get Croatia with an ageing team in the semi-final. Should have beat them. Only Modric was the only last remaining great player. Rakitic and all them were all getting old. Couldn't beat them. No, we've got to do with that squad. We're entitled to win something. And of course, in the middle of the season next year, um, we have got the World Cup, which is a bizarre, bizarre scenario, really, isn't it, Harry? You always think it's in the summer. We should really have just finished the World Cup. Um, no, but if it's anywhere World World normal, comes around, Newcastle could be top of the league, I think. Yeah, <laughs> but I'll have to um, pay you a thousand pound for your yeah. ten pound. <laughs> but um. You know, could, do you think that we could, you know, win this World Cup? Yeah, I do, yeah. I think we can win any... I think with them players, we're entitled to win any... Have a look at them. Have a look at the teams teams around the world at the moment. Who's around now like we used to have? You had spells going back in years when you had great Brazilian teams every year, just incredible players, incredible... And, oh, you knew they were... And then you had great Italian teams or great German teams, uh, Spanish teams with great players and French teams. Now you look round, who's, who, who scares you? Who scares you anymore? You know, there's people, you know, have a look at Brazil. They've got players playing in the Brazilian team, just about getting the Premier League, a decent Premier League team. It's, uh, yeah. no, England's got fantastic players. And if the manager has a go and takes the shackles off and lets us have a go at it, um, you know, it's a bit more ambitious. I think we've got a real chance of winning it. Well, it's one thing I'd love to see in my lifetime. And, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, this might be the year. Um, but I can only imagine it's going to be so, so hot over there. It's a bit of a bizarre place to host the World Cup. Would you agree? Yeah, but it's um, going to be indoors, isn't it? It's going to tempt you to got cold air you know, yeah, air con, con yeah, air conditioning, yeah, be all right, we'll be okay. Yeah, well, hopefully, fingers crossed. Thank you so much again, Harry, pleasure. for coming on the show. It's a pleasure as always to have you on, and, and all the very best. Win the league, I'll finish in the top three. I won't come into camp for Cliffs again in case I bash into you and have to give you a thousand pounds. <laughs> Cheers, Harry. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> All right, see you Keep later, mate. Their great game, and it's yeah. so much to look forward to. So many great clubs in the Premier League, but uh, everyone's full of expectations at the moment. But by the end of the year, you'll be pulling your hair out and trying to stay up, trying to win something. It's fantastic. What a game! Looking forward to it. And thank you, everybody, for joining me on this special show. Please do remember to hit the like, the subscribe and the bell button below to be alerted to any new videos we do here on Up the Cherries in all departments. Please do remember to check out our previous interview with Harry Redknapp, which will be found in the interview section. We've also interviewed many players across the Cherries team, both now and in the past. So we've had Steve Fletcher, We've had Steve Cook, even for you Nottingham Forest fans and, of course, Bournemouth fans as well. Um, Efren Okuku, um, Luther Blizzard, um, plus lots, lots more. So please do remember to hit that like and subscribe button. It does mean a lot to us. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Please do leave in the comment section if you agree with Harry's predictions, where you think your team will finish. And until the next video... Up the cherries, and I'll see you then.